There are three types of goals that most people talk about, and those would be, as shown up here on the slide, long-range goals, mid-range goals, and short-range goals. Again, I really think that, you know, depending upon where you are in your life, um, the definition of what is short and mid and long really changes. Um, for instance, you know, uh, for the typical you know, high school student or college age student, you know, somebody that's 18 or 20 or, you know, the the, the typical uh, young person. I mean, for them, a long range goal might be, you know, one year or two years down the road. Whereas um, when you get older and you get more, you know, established in your career, you know, a long range goal might be 10 years down the road or even longer than that. Um, so, you know, definitions of what is short, mid, and long range really uh, differ, I think, depending upon where you're at in your life. Um, you know, and I would think that for most of you, I, I think you could say, you know, possibly a mid or a long range goal is to graduate from say, your program here at Cincinnati State. Whereas a, a short-range goal, if you look at, you know, the educational blocks that we talked about already, you know, you could take a short-range goal as maybe being two or three weeks. You know, for instance, a short-range goal might be to uh, successfully pass, you know, your uh, next test uh, in a certain course with an A or a B. And that test might be two or three weeks from now. So that could be a short-range goal that you start uh, thinking about. Mid-range goal, again, conceivably could be to successfully complete, you know, this, this semester's uh, worth of courses, the three, four courses that you're taking this semester successfully, complete all of them successfully. And again, long-range could be, uh, you know, to, to get your degree. So uh, again, that, that differs probably if you're a college-age person, uh, than when you're out in your career. And when you get your, your first entry-level job, you know, you, your short-range goal might be to complete the probationary period after, in six months successfully. Uh, your mid-range goal might be to move up uh, to, you know, a, a higher position in a couple years. And a long-range goal might be to you know, lead a department or manage a department, um, you know, within five or ten years or whatever it might be. So, again, you know, what <clears throat> what is what might uh, really differ depending upon, you know, where you're at. Um, a long-range goal, uh, the Chapter 2 talks about two uh, concepts. One is self-awareness uh, and the other is self-projection. Okay, we've talked about self-awareness um, before, uh, but when you're talking about goal setting, uh, the book really talks about uh, having four components to self-awareness. The first component is being aware of who you are, um, and this this really involves you know what your interests are, what your passions are, what you you know you identify as as being strengths. Because those are the things that you want to maximize. <coughs> Excuse me. If I, you know, if I looked at, you know, a goal, my own personal goal of, you know, playing <clears throat> in the uh, National Basketball Association, you know, um, <clears throat> I might look at this first one and say, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, I, I really have the the ability to play in the NBA, um, you know, uh, considering my age, um, you know, my, my physical abilities and talents, I mean, you know, that might not be a real good goal for me to, to have, um, you know, so being aware of, of yourself. You'd hate to be in a uh, math intensive uh, program, you know, something like engineering, and you know, recognize that you really don't like math or problem solving too much. That wouldn't be a real good fit. Um, 
the second thing, awareness of your options. Think about, you know, um, the options that are available in front of you. Again, in, in school, um, you know, you want to think about, you know, okay, um, I'm, I'm here, uh, I'm in Cincinnati, um, what, what universities, what colleges, what avenues do I have to pursue, you know, my goal? You know, if it's academic, you got to say, hey, what colleges and universities exist out there that support my program? The third one, the awareness of options that best fit you, um, you, you got to look at, you know, really the things that you have as far as um, the first thing, abilities, interests, and values, and you, you got to look at that relative to you know, the, the possibilities, the options that are out there. Uh, for instance, if you're, <clears throat> you know, uh, again, interested in studying engineering, okay, but you can only study engineering in the evening. You know, one, you want to make sure that engineering and problem solving and math and all those abilities are things that you really like. And the second thing is you want to make sure that you know, you can pursue a degree, an engineering degree, that's offered at night, okay? The last thing is really just awareness of the process. You know, what needs to go on in order for you to get enrolled, let's say, in an engineering school or in your, whatever your particular educational pathway is. What, um, you know, how do you get enrolled? How, how do you get started? Once you get started, what are the requirements for success um, and, and things of that nature? So, again, be aware of who you are, what your talents are, what options are out there, and, and then really the process that it takes. The next thing, and we'll stop after this slide for part two, is motivation. Again, this is nothing that's really earth shattering here, but if you set a goal, and you want to successfully complete that goal, you have to have a commitment to that goal, okay? People, uh, a lot of times, set goals, but they don't want to follow through. You know, they, they fall short on following through. Um, things are going to get tough um, along your pathway. I mean, nobody, I don't think anybody really flies just through school. Um, things will get tough, maybe you'll have personal issues, work issues, family issues, you know, whatever it might be. Um, but in order to succeed, you have to remain committed to that goal. It doesn't mean that the process can't change. It doesn't mean that maybe you were thinking that you were going to, uh, you know, pursue a degree full time and because of difficulties that you're having, maybe that means that you drop back to part-time, but you still remain committed. We have people here, and it happens, it happens every few years, we have people that graduate from Cincinnati State that, you know, literally started their degree program, you know, 25 and 30 years ago. Uh, it's, it's, it's not all that unusual of a situation. When we had the downturn, the economic downturn, I, I had people coming back that had not completed their degrees um, but had, you know, five courses left or ten courses left. But they had been out of school for five years or ten years. And anyway, they used that downturn to say, hey, I'm committed to um, getting my degree. 